Can't you just feel it? The conflict is becoming apparent in our culture. It reminds me of those words of John Paul II. We're now living in the final confrontation between the gospel and the anti-gospel, between the church and the anti-church, between Christ and the antichrist. And if we don't choose to know God's word, to believe God's word, to follow God's word, we're going to be a sitting duck for all kinds of confusion, all kinds of disorder. Those are really important choices that people have to make. And these choices are difficult. Who am I going to marry? What kind of life am I going to live? How am I going to raise my kids? What am I going to do with my time, my talent, and my treasure? And I have to make a choice today. Jesus says to each one of us, I came that you might have life and have it to the full. The question is, do we want it? Hey, welcome to another week of the choices we face. It's real common for us human beings to experience fear and anxiety about all kinds of things because life in this world is fragile. Life in this world is vulnerable. Last week we talked about fear and anxiety about finances, about money, about having what we need to live and to eat and everything like that. This week we're going to talk about fear and anxiety about health, about getting sick, about dying and the tremendous, wonderful truth that scripture gives us about how we can be freed from being a slave to fear. Fear and anxiety is normal, but we shouldn't be dominated by it. We shouldn't be led by it. We shouldn't be uh, harassed by it. We should live in freedom in the midst of the fragility of this world because of what the Lord has promised us. Yeah, it's a really important thing to be able to see. It's a kind of a fundamental battle. And I think the, the this is recorded, what we're gonna be watching during the COVID period really one of the most intense periods of it. And there were a lot of people globally, there was a big time anxiety because it was unknown what to do, how to control it, is it spreading and all that sort of thing. Yeah. It's a deep fear uh, that, that causes us not to be able to be in peace in that context. Yeah, and, and Jesus really understands fear and anxiety about these things. He really, really does. Yeah. He, he knows what human life is like. He knows what human beings are like. And he's given us some tremendous help not to be a slave to these things. So we recorded this uh, when we had our annual gathering, which we normally have in person. We couldn't do that this year. And lo and behold, we had 26,000 people tune in yeah. from 22 different countries. So let's take a look at this little segment here and then we'll talk about it. Good. Good. So let me tell you my own story again. I had drifted into getting over concerned about my health at a certain point. It wasn't like I had great health problems at that time, but I, I, I would have headaches or I'd have an upset stomach or I didn't get enough sleep. And I, I'd kind of say, well, I guess I should kind of like go a little easy on myself today and you know, wait till tomorrow when I feel a little better to pray. And then I read something that Teresa of Avila wrote. She was writing about nuns in her convent. She says, Nuns in my convent, they're stopping coming to prayer. They say they just had a headache. And then they say, well, maybe they'll have a headache again. And then they stay away from prayer three more days. They say, maybe I'll have a headache. And then she says, oh, God, help me this complaining among nuns. If you don't swallow death and the lack of health, you'll never do anything. When I read that, I was convicted. Believe it or not, I was like one of those nuns. I know it's embarrassing to admit a guy in Michigan being like a nun in, in, in Spain. I got convicted that I was over-concerned about how I was feeling, over-concerned about my health. And a lot of times when the Lord convicts you of something, he also gives you the grace to get free of it, and that was the case. I was convicted of being over-concerned, but the Lord gave me the grace right then and there to be delivered from it, it was the fear that Hebrews 2 is talking about, the fear of death that Hebrews is talking about, that Jesus came to free us from the fear. I got freed from the fear that day, and I've never been afraid ever since of any kind of health problem I've had. And I've had some health problems. The last couple of international trips I've had, I've had kidney stone attacks in foreign countries, in, in emergency rooms where I couldn't speak the language. But there was a peace there, and there was a trust in the Lord that never would have been there before. 
And this is really true. Jesus wants to free us from the fear of death and from the, the lack of health. Now, what does it mean to swallow death? I think what it means is to come at, be at peace about the fact that we are going to die. So I'd like to suggest right now, take a look at your own death and trust God for the moment of it, trust God for the timing of it, trust God for when it happens and how it happens, trust God for those you might leave behind, say, go to your deepest fear, go to your greatest anxiety, go to your most intense worry, and right there, I want you to say, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. And I believe you will be delivered from being a slave to that fear. The fear will return, the anxiety will return. It's normal, worry will return, but it never has to control us, it never has to grip us. At the darkest moment, your deepest anxiety, I want you to go there right now and say, Jesus, I trust in you. Now, one of the things that Francis de Sales says is he says, if you're sick and the Lord hasn't healed you yet and the doctors haven't healed you yet, don't waste your suffering. I know there's people out right now who are, who are watching, who are listening, who are suffering. I know there's a lot of people who have health issues. I know there's a lot of people right now, this moment, who are in pain. And one of the things that Francis de Sales says is don't waste your suffering. This really came home to me when I was at Fatima a couple of years ago. And for some reason, I'd known the whole Fatima story my whole life long. I'd been to Fatima once before and I didn't particularly connect with her, but this time I particularly connected with St. Jacinta and St. Francisco. And it's pretty amazing, but they both died in the Spanish flu in 1918, the worst pandemic in modern times. 50 million people died of the Spanish flu, nowhere near what's happening right now. Mary asked them, are you willing to accept the suffering that comes your way in reparation for the sins that offend the Lord so much and also for the conversion of sinners? Lucy writes many, many years ago in her diary, we eagerly said, yes, Mary, we're happy to accept the suffering that the Lord sends us. And then Lucy writes in her diary, we had no idea what we were saying yes to. But when they both got the Spanish flu, Mary asked Jacinta, are you willing to suffer a little longer so that more souls can be saved? She said, yes, I am. She ended up dying alone in a hospital in Lisbon, but Mary was with her and visited her and told her some really important things. Don't waste your suffering. There's tremendous power, tremendous grace that could be released if we join our suffering to the suffering of Jesus. St. Paul says, I make up in my own flesh what's lacking in the suffering of Christ. Nothing's lacking in the suffering of Christ, but Jesus is so generous that he's giving us the privilege of participating with him in the salvation of the world, not just through the witness of our lives, not just through the preaching of the gospel, not just through our faithful service and our vocations, not just in our cooking and cleaning and, and all the things that are part of our life, but in our suffering. The very pain right now that we're suffering can release grace into the world, can, can make reparation for the sins that offend God so much, the sins that Peter was talking about in his talk and can also release grace for the conversion of sinners. Jesus tells us who to fear. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Do not fear those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. There really is a heaven and there really is a hell. 
no matter what lies are filling the world in the church today, there really is a heaven, there really is a hell, and it really matters whether we respond to Jesus or not. It really matters whether we believe it or not. It really matters if we repent of our sins or not. It really matters if we follow him or not. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 29, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and throw it away. Now, he doesn't mean that literally. This is literary form. This is Jewish hyperbole. Yes, it is. But he's making a very strong point. It's better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. What Jesus is saying is, do whatever you need to do to turn away from serious sin. Now these days, a lot of people don't even know what serious sin is. Like, uh, is, it, is it serious sinful not to recycle? You know, I mean, there's a lot of confusion out there especially in the area of sexual morality today. Listen to what God's word says, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Paul says, don't let anybody deceive you. The immoral, and the actual Greek word is the sexually immoral, will not enter the kingdom of God. The fornicator, the adulterer, the person who engages in homosexual activity, the thief, the robber, the liar, the miser, the drunkard, the idolater, the sorcerer will not enter the kingdom of God. Here's the good news. Paul goes on to say, and such were some of you, but you've been set free by the blood of Jesus Christ, the washing of the water of baptism, and the power of the Holy Spirit. So if there's anybody watching this right now, listening to this right now, that you're in the grip of serious sin, you got to get out of that. you got to repent. you got to throw yourself at the feet of the Lord. you got to go to the sacrament of confession. Go to a 12-step if you need to go to. Go to a 12-step group if you need to. Uh, get help from a brother or sister. Uh, throw out the stuff you need to throw out. If your computer's causing you to sin, throw it out. Yes, you can survive without a computer. People have done it for thousands of years. Do whatever you need to do to get free from serious sin because your life literally depends on it. Peter talked about the second death. The first death for a Christian is entry into, into paradise. But there's such a thing as a second death, the lake of fire. In the book of Revelation it says, sorcerers and fornicators and idolaters are, and, and liars are thrown into the lake of fire, the second death, which is hell. Life is short and only one thing is necessary, to throw ourselves at the feet of Jesus, to ask him to have mercy on us and forgive us our sins, and to become his disciple, to become his follower, to become his witness. The most powerful text though, and I'll end here, it's from the words of Jesus himself, John chapter 11. Martha comes running to Jesus and says, Jesus, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died, and I know he'll rise again the last day. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die, shall never see the second death. So brothers and sisters, what's the worst thing that could happen to us? Well, according to human standards, dying. But for a Christian, death is an entryway into paradise, an entranceway into a far better life. In case I didn't cover your anxiety or worry or fear tonight, I have two final texts that covers everything. Philippians chapter four, verses four to seven. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let everybody know your forbearance. The Lord is at hand. You know, one of the things I really appreciate about our pastor, Father Ed, and, and the, the sermons he's been giving online, is he says, you know, it's a terrible loss that we don't have the Eucharist and we don't have the personal presence of a priest, so we can't wait to re return to those. Those are so special. But, you know, Vatican II says there's two other ways in which Jesus is present to us. He's present in his word. And he's present in our souls through baptism. Jesus isn't distant from you right now. He's right in you. 
The Father and Son and Holy Spirit have come to dwell in you. He's right in you. He's nearer to you than your own breath. He's closer to you than your closest friend. So, have no anxiety about anything. So that covers everything. If I didn't cover your anxiety tonight, this covers it. Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's a command from the Word of God. When anxiety starts to grip us, resist it in the name of the Lord. St. Ignatius of Loyola says, discouragement is never from the Lord. It's always to be resisted. You resist it with the word of God. You resist it with the spirit of the Lord. You resist it with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Dear brothers and sisters, thank you for letting me share this word with you tonight. May it strengthen you. May it free you. May it give you ammunition for the battle and for the days ahead. Peter, uh, I'm so grateful for the Word of God. What a, what a gift the Word of God is. What a gift that He hasn't left us in the dark. He, hasn't, he really hasn't left us orphans. Remember he said, the Holy Spirit will come and remind you what I've said. The Holy Spirit's reminding us yeah. of, of what Jesus said, what the apostles said. It's, it's so special. It's such a wonderful, amazing gift. You know, just remembering that night, uh, when we had the we had the gathering, it was in uh, April of 2020, right? Was that mm-hmm. that was that night? Uh, and something happened that night. The Holy Spirit just anointed so much of what went on. Even though we were in this empty church with just a couple cameras and yeah. a tech guy and, a, and yeah. a little bit of a music ministry, and it felt weird talking into a camera a little bit yeah. and not having other people there. But a lot of people got touched. And I remember like uh, five or 6,000 people were on the, you know, chat or whatever you call that, yeah, you know, and yeah. people from all over the world. And they were coming alive because they were being freed by God's word, mm-hmm. by the power of God's word. Truth was being spoken to them at a time when the whole world was gripped in fear about its yeah. health. Yeah. I mean, this, this invisible enemy, this yeah. pandemic, right. and we didn't know how bad it was going to be. We didn't know how many people were going to die. We didn't know how it was going to spread, you know, and that the Lord permitted that to happen, the, the, what we were going through there. Yeah. Uh, I'm not talking about him being the cause of the whole thing, but he permitted it to happen. And humanity was brought face to face with its great enemy, death, mm-hmm. and the diminishing of the person. And health issues and anxiety about health, as you were saying so articulately there, is about that fight. And I think the Lord wanted us to be able to come to terms with it and to say, look, your money... Your politics, your entertainment, your constant preoccupation with, with your health and everything else, you know, worry and n- nothing can solve this problem. I can solve this problem. And this is the root, as you're saying, of most all your anxieties about your health. Mm-hmm. I want to help you conquer this. I want you to see me and understand me. And if you don't know me more deeply in the power of the Holy Spirit, and by my grace, this will have power over your life. Mm-hmm. And I, you're a child of God and I've made you to be free, but you got to get serious about your faith. You got to get serious about seeking me and, and letting my word really inform you mm-hmm. and be the source. So you can come into that freedom. So you don't just like say I'm a follower, but actually I live in, I live in fear all the time. I'm gripped by fear all the time. That's because we haven't internalized the truth of God's word that sets us free. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that was some good preaching there. That was, that was the truth. Yeah. Coming to us. Yeah. I, I think one of the most amazing things out of all the scripture that I, I quoted is from John 8, where Jesus himself says, I am. Of course, we remember that because that's how Yahweh revealed himself. I am the one who is. So here's Jesus basically saying, this is God, guys. I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me will not die. And even if he does die, he will not die. He'll be alive. What what an amazing, wonderful promise. And it's all focused on him. Yeah. It's all about Jesus. He's the resurrection and the life. And our only hope to not end up in the second death is to come to him and believe in him and let him bring us into the Father's house. Let him 
greet us on the other side of physical death and bring us into the Father's house rather than disappearing into the darkness where there's wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yeah, we, Ralph, I was just thinking this passage came to mind from 2 Corinthians, so related to that. It's that living with faith, a faith perspective. So we do not lose heart. So in the face of sickness, aging, suffering, we do not lose heart. Though our outer man is wasting away, our inner man is being renewed every day. Is that really our awareness, even when we're, we're, in, we're, we're experiencing sickness and suffering? Do we have a renewed mind that says, even though my body's wasting away, I don't like it, I'd rather not have it, but this doesn't surprise me. Why? I'm a disciple. I understand what's going on. My body's wasting away because I'm living in a fallen world. My life here is going to be short. Um, the, the greatest saints, some of the greatest saints we read about, like Vincent Ferrer, the great healer, you know, they just amazing stories the whole time. He was battling very serious physical yeah. suffering yeah. in the midst of all that ministry. And he wasn't afraid of it. You know, yeah. and, and, and so listen to the St. Paul's words again. So we don't lose heart. Don't let it steal your heart, your heart, trust in God, your sense of God's mission and engaging the mission and living it. Though our outer man is wasting away, our inner man is being renewed every day. Keep that in mind for this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all compare. Because we look not to the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen for things that are seen are transient, but things that are unseen are are eternal. Mm. And, and this is, this is real. Like even if I think Ralph, when our body wastes away or we're suffering, and you, you know, that for a number of years, I've been battling sleep apnea. Yes. You know? A terrible suffering. Yeah. A terrible and, you suffering. Know, and you know, it did at times grip me with anxiety. Sure. And when I was on the road and traveling and being in different countries and my clock was turned upside down, I'd start to worry. Yeah. about not getting sleep. That's the worst thing you can do when you're in that situation. And, and the Lord had to bring me to the place to show me what, what am I worried about? One of the things was, you know, I, I was afraid I couldn't deliver. You know, I was yeah. afraid I couldn't produce what I wanted. And there was a lot of self-reliance in me, Ralph. Like, mm -hmm. like I'm leaning on uh, the confidence that when I'm at my best, good things will happen instead yeah. of just trusting the Lord. Yeah. And I was just so, so admired, you know, the last number of years, the way you face some really difficult things physically mm -hmm. on the mission field and continue to walk in the Lord's obedience. And you were diminished physically. Mm -hmm. There's no question about yeah. it. Yeah. And it was difficult, but I remember you, you know, emailing me from Australia in one of the most difficult periods you've ever faced on the road. And you're saying, you know, Peter, the, but the, the amazing thing is, I mean, I don't feel like I have energy for anything and I actually am in pain and this is really difficult. But when I get up to give the talk, yeah. This is some of the best stuff I think that I've ever spoken on her. Yeah. God's anointing yeah. is so I, great. I know, and so there's a deep letting go. And yeah. Ralph, as you were speaking, I'm just, there was a prompting as we, I was listening to you. Friends, I think all of us experience this all across the range, but I, for some reason, I have my heart on brothers and sisters who have a lot, mm -hmm. have a lot of money, have a lot of security, have a lot of safety, have a lot of comfort. And sometimes in that condition, ironically, we can be, extremely preoccupied every day with my health. I mean, people, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not, I'm not saying everybody who's in that condition or has those yeah. kinds of resources is like that, but many people are mm -hmm. and they build their whole life around being safe and being yeah. comfortable and having the best doctors and the best of everything and worrying on all the time yeah. about aging and this thing. And what that is, is it's, it's, there's something that Jesus wants you to let go of. And so like St. Paul, we can, we know how to be abased and how to abound and we can be secure in the Lord because it's easy to miss the Lord's mission for us and the engagement of, of loving service and mm. being free while we're still here yeah. to engage in the work of salvation yeah, and love yeah. and suffering because we're so preoccupied. And I don't want to go by those people because I might get something. I don't want to go here. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of that in America. That's one of the yeah. downsides yeah. of growing up in a place that's materially, I mean, the richest country in the history of the world. Yep. And a lot of that's built around that fear of our health. Mm -hmm. And so all the commercials and all the stuff, always passing on, knowing that you're worrying about it and they want to stoke it. So you spend more money and yeah. more time worrying about it. Yeah. You know, and yeah. the Lord wants us to be free of all that. Yeah. You know, well, he actually says that if you try to save your life in this world, you're actually going to lose it. But if you want to lose mm -hmm. your life out of love yeah. of Jesus and love of people, 
you'll actually gain your life. And, and I think another part of it is that we just need to uh, accept you know, the reason why we die is because it is the penalty for rebellion against God. You know, I mean, we just have to accept that we're, we're experiencing the penalty for rebellion against God. But Jesus has come to release us from the ultimate penalty of separation from God and really bring us into the kingdom, you know. And it's sort of like we just need to grow up a little bit. We just need to grow up and accept that suffering is part of this life and death is part of this life and that... Uh, it's because in the garden, Jesus said, if you do that, God said, if you do these things, you're going to die. Hey, let's just accept our punishment. Let's just accept the penalty. But thank God for the redemption that he sent in Jesus that can now take even the penalty and turn it into a resurrection life. It's just like when the uh, Israelites were uh, complaining against God in the desert, you know, the serpents came and bit them and they, they asked Moses help, asked God to save us. And Moses said, you know, the Lord said to Moses, here's a bronze serpent. Make a bronze serpent, serpent, and whoever looks at it will be saved. Well, that's what God did with Jesus, you know. The instrument of our death, you know, the, the symbol of death, crucifixion, now becomes the way of life. And so Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. And so Jesus is now lifted up, not only on the cross, he's lifted up in the resurrection, and he's trying to draw us all to himself. So Believe, believe Jesus, believe Jesus. And that's the most important thing we can do. Believe him and obey him and we will live forever. Peter has written this very good booklet called Fear God and Give Him Glory. It all begins with the fear of the Lord, respecting God, paying attention to him, being reverent before him, adoring him, contemplating him, trembling before him because he's the Holy One who loves us so much. We'd like to give this booklet to you at no cost just for the asking. Go to our website, renewalministries.net, call the 800 number, and we'll get it right off to you. Till next week. This is Ralph Martin and Peter Herbeck wishing you the very best to live in that freedom even now, even though we're beset by anxiety and fear, we will not be slaves to it because of Jesus. One of the most overlooked yet foundational spiritual gifts is the fear of the Lord. The scriptures call this gift a fountain of life, a source of confidence and the beginning of wisdom. Today our culture, politics and even the church are in crisis. Everyone can see the deep division, the escalation of anger and violence, and whole nations seem to be in the grip of fear. We have come to fear the wrong things, the opinions of men, and losing our idols. The fear of God is not in the land, and God in his mercy is shaking the nations to wake us up so we hear his word. Do not fear what this people fear. Rather, fear God and give him glory. In this booklet, I explain the fear of the Lord, why it is an antidote to the current crisis, and how you can awaken this gift in your life. To receive a free copy, visit our website or call the number on the screen.